So, what a year this has been. Full of ups and downs, mostly downs, but there were a couple of surprises that I had throughout. Judgment finally came to PC, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 came out early, I got an A in an English course. But the most shocking thing that happened this year was what happened to this channel. Seriously, what happened? No, really, what happened to this channel? I practically left it to die last year by not working on a consistent topic, and yet, one weather video blows up and now it's back. I cannot state my appreciation for what you all have allowed me to do with this channel. This channel means the world to me, and these videos are me in a way. These little weather documentaries out of the so far unofficial video series titled Nature's Fury has allowed me to follow a passion for video creation and my eventual career in meteorology, alongside being my job during college. So as thanks, and more so as a retrospective on the year as a whole, I am spending today doing something different. Something not to appeal to an algorithm, something for myself and for all of my fans who have transformed an unknown figure in the Geometry Dash community, known by few, into a respected member, ish, of the weather community. Today, I'll be taking a look back at every single weather documentary that I've made this year, ranking them from worst to best in my eyes, talking a bit further in depth with what I went through while making them, and addressing any corrections that I have to make with them. This will cover everything from the Jarrah retrospective to the Salt Lake City F2 tornado. My rankings will likely differ from everyone else's because I'm weird like that, so comment your favorite video I've made this year if you want to. Or not, I'm a YouTube video, not your mom. Yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of explanation. Oh wait, there's this obligatory letter from the smart side of Alfaria's brain that I need to read. Alright. <gasps> Regardless of what I say in this video, please keep in mind that all of these videos, in comparison to whatever garbage plagues weather YouTube from David Schlatthauer and what have you, all of the videos I will be talking about today are objectively on the better side of content on weather YouTube. I am forcing Alfaria to say this because he's way too harsh of himself and of his own work. So please keep in mind that if he calls himself an idiot to disregard that point, and please note that he likes to over-exaggerate himself and humiliate himself, usually for the sake of comedy. This applies to everything in this video, unless otherwise stated. Sincerely, the smart part of Alfaria's brain. Well, now that that's over with, there really isn't any other way to get on with this without saying, let's get started. God, I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> So, remember like a couple of seconds ago that the letter mentioned that whatever the letter argued was in regard to everything in this video unless otherwise stated? Yeah, so the worst video I made this year is the entire reason why that last part had to be added. Number 13, the tornado emergency with no tornado. The last thing you'd want with your tornado emergency is for there to be no tornado. Rishi, why did you tell me to do this? If there was ever a video that I felt like was made for the sake of getting a video out with little to no interest in what I was talking about, it was this one. The false story video is by all accounts far from the worst thing I've made if we're including all of my older stuff before weather, but it's still pretty bad. For one, the video itself was made because, one, I needed something out in late July because Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was coming out at the end of the month and I was going to be completely inactive until I beat that. But two, I also needed something that was quick and easy to do so I could get interviews scheduled. So filler video time it is! To be clear, the scripted researching process was fine from what I remember. I mean, judging it on its own besides the concept being kinda cool, there's nothing really extraordinary going on. 10 minutes of the video itself was just discussing the issues that contributed to the Tory being issued, and I feel like that could have been shortened, but I think it was overall alright. Editing was also fine, nothing amazing, but it existed. What really screws it over for me is what I got wrong, and when one of the big points that I used in the video is wrong, then it's gonna suffer big from it. The first point isn't really a correction to the video itself, but more so an update to the concerns that I got about the origins of the false reports. In the video, I said that the false reports came from the 15th, which is true, but the comment section said that it was from the 11th, but there were apparently false reports on both days by the same person. A friend of mine who made a whole video on what went down said that there were reports on both days that were false that originated from Ohio, so just watch that if you want more information about it. So, not really a problem, but just wanted to address something that the comments tried to correct me on. But the biggest issue was what I said regarding NWS spotters. I said they had access to NWS chat. Is that the NWS certified storm spotters have access to NWS chat? <coughs> Never before have I gotten so many comments about such a big mistake, but oh my goodness gracious, this was the mistake of all time. Now, my source for this was the Storm Spotter Network website where I saw, or at least remember seeing, that some members of the Spotter Network have access to NWS chat. I wanted to ask a friend of mine who was in the Spotter Network about the validity of that statement, and then I got ghosted 100 Gex style after they said they'd do it. 
So I just said, well, they gotta have access to NWS chat, which was the utter epitome of me not doing further research and just neglecting basic integrity when making a video. That one part, which may not seem that big in terms of the grand scheme of things, is a crucial part of the argument that I made for that video. And the fact that I got it so dead wrong that people were wondering where I heard about it is what single-handedly made this video so much worse in my eyes. If it wasn't for that, the video itself would be fine, but nothing noteworthy. But because of that error, I feel like there really is nowhere else to put it but here. It's the one video that if I could take back and do something else, I honestly would. Although, it wasn't all bad, as it led to the best hate comment I've ever gotten. Ladies and gentlemen, that comment has since been removed, but I'm gonna give it to Serios to read this out because it is comedy gold. There were confirmed reports of a tornado on the ground by ground chasers and local reporters confirming that. On top of the lat, cars flipped on highways as well. However, I'm sorry, but I do not see the pint in this video as the NWS knows that they are doing and don't just issue any warning with a grain of salt, but do so accordingly and with more than enough reason. Especially a tornado emergency. You are making up excuses due to the cap of negligence and proper knowledge of exactly what happened while it happened and when it was happening. I see this video as a disrespectful and misleading information. It's not a good idea to talk about something that you don't fully understand or know about because it can cause confusion and conflict and other problems. Normally, I don't pay attention to these comments, but this was so insane that I couldn't not talk about it. It's comedy gold. Also, I swear, not all of these entries are this long. But, real quick, only a small portion of the people who like my videos are subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy the content I create, consider subscribing. It helps support what I do and tells me I'm doing something right. Also, I have a Discord server that I frequently talk in, link to that is in the description. Anyways, back to the ranking. From here on out, I won't be as harsh on myself for my content because with the exception of the Tori video, I'm confident in saying that the rest of these videos from an outsider's perspective are great videos. Now as someone who has to research and edit the videos, I have a more critical outlook on my content. I will admit my biggest weakness is making short videos, case in point, the Atlanta Tornado video. Funnily enough, there isn't anything I got wrong with this video in general, and factually it was correct through and through. There isn't anything bad about the video per se, in fact the synopsis wasn't as long as I was expecting it to be. Reason for this is because the event in question is so small that there isn't much to discuss. It's why I hate covering smaller events, because going in depth with analysis is really hard. The big problem I have with it looking back is its pacing. It takes 5 minutes to get to the synopsis, which was roughly a third of the video's total runtime. It was with this video when I decided to scale back how in depth I go with the State of X weather segments which I believe was a benefit of this video. There's nothing offensive in this video, I think it's just kind of okay. If there was a single video that suffered due to issues in my personal life, it was this one. This was a video that I know a lot of people in my circle of peers and acquaintances that people were looking forward to, and to be fair, I think it delivered. Kind of. On one hand, I believe the actual tornado analysis and aftermath analysis portions of the video were spot on with the exception of one stupid statement, but I'll get to that later. The synoptic overview was alright, and the overview of the tornadic activity that year didn't go on for, like, forever. Editing was smooth, and it was the first video to use my character stills, which I did use sparingly throughout. So if all of that was fine, and the fact that I did enjoy my time researching this outbreak, why is it so low? Well, if you are unaware due to the circumstances I am not getting into here, the video was supposed to go out sometime between November 11th and the 13th. Then it had to get delayed because of family issues. While yes, most of the script, if not all of it, had been finished at that point, I neglected working on it over the next week, and so when the following week came and I actually needed to work on it, I fell into the issue of rushing a project. Radar loops were not great, I had to take the Washington Tornado one from Legend813A, whom I don't think has an issue with that since when I use other people's radar loops, it's either for a small project or something like that. Also, I give proper credit because I'm not evil. But the rest had to be taken from the IEM website, and that alone tells a story in its own right. Again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the person whom I asked to make the radar loops for the video kept getting pulled away from it due to personal life, so no hate on him. So yeah, low budget. The second issue was the three absolutely stupid mistakes that I made with the video. 
And with the exception of one, I have been able to fix in post because of this lovely thing called the YouTube editor tool where you could just cut parts of the video through the website after it's uploaded. That had to be used twice here. During the Brookport analysis, I said that Paducah was the second largest city in Kentucky, which no, it is not. I don't even know where I got that from. I was just like, oh, well, it's a big name, so it's probably that. Note to self, when saying stuff regarding population, actually check the census data instead of trusting someone on the internet. I also said that the highest risk for wind was 45 sig, which it wasn't. It was upgraded to a 60 sig wind during the 20z outlook. I should have probably looked at that, but I also know at the time of making the video, I thought the high risk that was issued in that outlook was only for the tornadoes, which there was still a 30 sig tour in place, but I didn't really scroll down far enough to see the 60 sig wind. Oops. That's the only segment that is still in the video. However, it's such a minor issue, and that 60 sig wind only lasted for one outlook anyway. However, the dumbest thing that happened was when I was discussing the morning parameters, where I said that mixed layer cape was at least 100 joules per kilogram, with it being way above that, as in I was a whole digit off. To be fair, it was above 100, but that is such a low bar that even Rishi who proofread the script pointed out and said, hey, check this number again, this is too low. I told him that I was reading it off the SPC map, and then a few weeks later I figured out I couldn't read a map because the 100 plus value was actually for MLCIN. Note to self, I cannot read. Again, a lot of this was due to family issues, and for the sake of my wallet, I needed to get it out fast. However, unlike the Tori video, I am also a bit more lenient with the fact that my family life was so crazy that I had to make an update video. The Paducah and MO cape debacles are out of the video now, but still, due to how rushed and poor it is, I feel like that the video was still decent enough, but definitely needed more time in the oven. Also, likely would have benefited from an interview of some kind. This is the most recent video I've made at the time of making this, and it's very similar to the Atlanta Tornado video without the pacing issues. Short videos are not my strong suit, but they are easy to get out, so that's the benefit to them, I guess. This was a fun video to research, and I do think that the end product was well done. Cutting down the intro and pre-synopsis stuff to under three minutes was probably the best thing I did with it. Although, I feel like a lot of these smaller tornadoes could be just one larger video on Metropolitan Tornado videos. At least with these weaker tornadoes, it's why I have no intentions on giving the Miami F1 tornado its own video. Especially for a tornado that was rated F1 and did nothing besides scare Miami. Oh yeah, getting off track. The Salt Lake City F2 tornado video was fine. Nothing really out of the ordinary, just a neat small video with no real issues that I can think of. Out of all of the videos that I've made this year, the video on Hurricane Katrina is the one that I feel the most conflicted about. Not because of what I covered, but because of what I didn't cover. TLDR, not much attention was brought towards what happened to Mississippi and Alabama in the video besides a brief paragraph. Something that I was told in the premiere chat and in the comment section. Out of all of the videos that I've made, this is the only one where I wouldn't be completely opposed to doing a follow-up on. Albeit, I'm not sure if I could extend it past six minutes without doing interviews. A lot of issues that stemmed from the recovery in Mississippi also stem from the fact that all the attention had to be put on New Orleans because the city was literally underwater. I also relied a bit too much on the character stones that I commissioned, as in I used them way too much and should really have only used them if I had nothing else to show on screen. Like the levy system rant, it was only really necessary at the end of that rant and not throughout the entire rant itself. People have wondered why this is such an issue, but it's an issue of total deafness that I think needs to be addressed at some point. Talking about deaf and stuff while a cute little detective is on screen can be off-putting, and it kind of is. It could be solved by getting a different artist or just ignoring it, but I feel like the critique on the Katrina video is valid. Now, I can use them as often as I want for this video because I'm just making fun of myself for like half an hour, and frankly, that's what this should be used for. Otherwise, I think this may have been one of the best videos I've made, held back by the lack of focus on the Mississippi coast and the overusage of my stills. This was a really fun storm to research, and throughout my time researching it, I learned so much more than what normal documentaries wanted to talk about in regard to how bad the response was. I made that a focus of the video, and it worked beautifully. The levy system explanation, despite being five minutes long, deserved it. This was one of the few storms for the channel where I had to talk about a government response and the dreaded topic of politics. But the Katrina video did a phenomenal job at covering that without going into my own political leanings. Which for the record is what every political discussion should do, but I digress. 
The writing that was there was really well done. I would have included more of Mississippi's recovery and aftermath, but I didn't want a repeat of the December 10th video for the sake of my own sanity in terms of video length and editing. Also, real quick, I'm really surprised nobody caught on to the fact that there was Nekopara music at the very end of the Katrina video. Speaking of that, let's talk about the December 10th video. Yeah, out of all of the videos that I made, this is probably going to be the most controversial placement. I never wanted to do a video on this outbreak. At all. Normally, I get that people want me to cover stuff because they want to understand the events in detail. But December 10th was the one I did not want to do because, one, everyone was already doing a December 10th documentary and I was subconsciously thinking that some random person who just popped off making weather documentaries making one would take away from what they were doing. And two, I had nothing to really add besides my little rant about the Western Kentucky Tornadoes rating. I still stand by that, and being honest here, out of all of the videos I've done, this was the one where I enjoyed researching the topic at hand the least. Everything I could say about the outbreak was already said and well known about, and a lot of what I researched was stuff that I already knew about. But a few things changed my mind about making a video on the topic. For starters, barely any video on the outbreak itself mentioned anything besides the Western Kentucky Tornado because views. And I wanted to change that and make a comprehensive video on the EF3 Plus tornadoes from that outbreak in one go. But the big reason as to why I made the video was the interviews with Christine Wogos and Richard Thompson. This is a video that was carried hard by its interviews, and there's no getting around that. Especially with Richard Thompson. I seriously doubt that a lot of documentaries on the subject are going to be able to get a lead forecaster from the Storm Prediction Center to agree to an interview, and it delivered. Now, my own writing was great as well, and I think in terms of tornado videos, it may be my best work from a writing perspective. From the synoptic details to the overview of the outbreak and the aftermath, I think the video was well done. Problem being that it's over an hour and a half long, but I understand that's because the interviews were essential to this video doing so well for me. Only issue that arises is a few missing transitions, which, to be fair, the video is a hundred minutes long, so I'm not going to knock myself hard on that one. Only major correction I have to make is that Defiance was 165 miles per hour, not 150, and Edwardsville was 150, not 165. I think I likely got the two numbers mixed up during research. Still, both were rated EF3, but an error is an error. This video was only so low because of how much I did not enjoy writing the script in the researching phases, which is most of the video process. Objectively speaking, the final product is likely in my top 5 best videos that I've made on the channel, but it's held back by a topic that I wasn't particularly fascinated with. That EF4 vs EF5 rant is still probably one of the best opinion pieces I've written though. From one winter tornado outbreak to another, the Super Tuesday retrospective was really well done and done on an outbreak that doesn't have a true video on it. Researching this outbreak was fun and I learned a lot more about this outbreak than I originally knew, especially looking into what happened outside of the Clinton, Arkansas, and Jackson, Tennessee EF4s. The look on my face when I saw the two random EF4s in northern Alabama which was in the slight risk, I was completely thrown off guard by that. Tells you something about how underreported some tornadoes are because of the bigger tornadoes, even if they aren't the strongest of the outbreak. Video itself was also really good throughout, however, nothing really stood out about it either. But considering I've been complaining a lot over these past few entries, that's a welcome change. No real correction had to be made, except I used imagery of the 500 millibar once when referring to the low level jet instead of 850. Oops. And I didn't cover the EF3 in Mississippi, but I also didn't want to have the video be stupidly long because I knew I had that outbreak to cover immediately after Super Tuesday. An outbreak that's important still resonates with those across the southern United States, and the video on it was nice. Nothing more to say than that. I was very much excited to dive into Irene. Wait, no, that, that sounds wrong. And whatever, nobody will care about it. So, just so you are all aware, out of the many hurricanes that I've heard about in the news growing up, Irene was the first one I actually remember. And digging into Irene as a storm was a blast from the past. Researching Irene was fascinating to me. I never really had a dull moment and enjoyed researching it. I could tell whether or not I enjoyed researching something if I go into a friend's Discord server and start waffling about the subject I was researching. Irene fit that category. From its effects in North Carolina to how close the storm actually got to being the cataclysmic hell that the storm was being described as before landfall, it, yeah, just to put it in perspective, storm surge was within a few feet of going into the subway system, and just apparently everyone forgot about that. 
a storm whose effects were worse than it's given credit for. As the second Tropical Cyclone video on the channel, Irene was very well written and still holds up from a writing standpoint and serves as a good video before jumping immediately into Sandy. The small snippet of the Ginger Z interview was a nice touch and I included that as a teaser for what was to come for the Sandy video. Not really a ton to correct here besides that this animation was meant to represent the forecast and not the actual strength at landfall. Didn't think about it too much when I made it, but assuming what your audience will think instead of outright telling them is a pretty big pitfall for a creator. Great hurricane video and probably the best video on Irene right now. Talk about an extremely unusual tornado outbreak and one that was likely the most fun I've had with researching something for a video. In retrospect, it's very similar to the Utah video, or the Utah video was similar to this in terms of structure. But this time I felt like it was necessary to go slightly more in depth with why Arizona doesn't get many tornadoes. Still, considering there were 12 tornadoes in the outbreak and nearly half of them were EF2+, I was beyond intrigued doing research with this outbreak through and through. Synopsis was great, and despite the fact that the only footage of any tornado that day was recorded on an actual potato, I cannot even begin to tell you how I was just laughing seeing this video. Like, I'm pretty sure my 3DS can record better video than that video. Okay, so I'm recording this on my 3DS. Uh, yeah, there's my hand, so I'm not sure if this is better quality, but, you know. California girls were unforgettable, Daisy Dukes bikinis on- The writing was good, editing was top notch, no real complaints here. Well, besides the fact that I cannot pronounce town names to save my life. Anyways, great video all around, check it out since the algorithm really didn't like it. You thought December 10th was an anomalous tornado event? The December 15th derecho said hold my beer and somehow ended up being the most anomalous severe weather event I've ever seen in December. In fact, if I remember correctly, I think this is the only December derecho in the upper plains of Midwest. This was so interesting to research on a meteorological level. The more I looked into it, the more I just kept saying to myself, wow, this looks like something from July or August, because that's what it was. All helped by a great explanation from Nick Stewart, which, fun fact, I contacted about potentially being interviewed and he told me he was sent my Jero video, which was the ego boost I needed that day. So what about the video itself? It's really good. The video itself had a lot of major improvements overall in comparison to the Jero video. For one, I took the comments advice and decided to speak slower than I did previously. Of course, I suffer from these funny things called speech impediments and ASD, so it does take time to adjust to these changes and trust me, in private, I still talk with the mental age of a five-year-old. But I think the slower pace did help here. The topic at hand was very fun to talk about as well. Only real correction is that I used 500 millibar imagery when referring to the low level jet. Again. Besides that, a fantastic video that is a must watch for those who have seen everything else. But then again, just about everything on this channel is a must watch. There's a general rule of thumb when it comes to content creation. The older the video is, the more you will hate it as you grow as a content creator. Growing distaste for your past work, essentially. A lot of those pitfalls are found in the first few years of content creation, and it's unavoidable, no matter how much you want to say that you never encountered it yourself. When it comes to the weather documentaries I have made, that much applies. In fact, the two that I made first are completely gone from existence, and thank goodness it is. But my first try after not producing one for over a year is the exception to that self-deprecation rule. Now, Jero wasn't my first video I've ever made, but it was the first true weather documentary on this channel. While the April 2011 Super Outbreak video technically uses the template first, it is due for a remaster desperately and I'll get around to it at some point or another. Jero was the first video I used the template that I used today in full force. A video that started production after the Force 13 documentary team failed to start. I began researching it in March and there was so much I loved about the research process. I learned so much more about the basics of synoptic meteorology of severe weather events, and I have the Jero video to thank for that. There's so much I did with this video in the background that required me to find a basic weather term glossary. My understanding of severe weather has greatly been improved thanks to Jero, but the video itself. What separates good documentaries from the rest is the writing, and the Jero video is a prime example of that in my opinion. I still get shivers down my spine listening to the aftermath segment. And I will stand by that the intro into the aftermath featuring Empty House, an unused song from the Undertale soundtrack, may be one of the most emotionally impactful parts of any video I've made. When it comes to music choice, it was nearly perfect, with only my more recent videos being better in this regard. I was so concerned about the synopsis being too wordy, but it turned out to not even be an issue. 
The only issue regarding the editing came down to accidentally using the wrong Tornado Watch image for one part, and that the music outside of Empty House was too quiet. Thanks, HitFilm. But what I was most proud of was the Dr. Fawn interview and the review of the paper itself. Even though some enlightened individuals say the paper's bad and OMG, OG, Fujita scale better, which all I gotta say to those people is please go touch some grass, this still remains the most important interview out of any video I've ever made and probably plan to make. Very few know about Dr. Fawn's report, and whether or not the paper itself is good or not is not why I covered it. I covered it because it's cited as the first major report by the EF scale proposal and the SPC calling for a revision of the Fujita scale. It's an underreported topic and one that has more importance than it's given credit for. It helps cement Gerald in the history books, despite how unknown Gerald is to the general public. I cannot thank Dr. Fawn enough for his work with me after getting the interview delayed over and over again because I kept getting sick. The success that the Gerald documentary has had for my channel has changed my life forever and I cannot sing my praises enough. I don't think there was a... What's that? Check my comment section. Oh, I have to talk about the basement. Alright, let's talk about the basement claim and unlike the other corrections I have made, this is the one that I seriously don't know what to think about. So, in the video, I claimed that there were no basements or tornado shelters in the Double Creek Estates neighborhood, which I've gotten more than a dozen comments saying otherwise. When asking for a source, I was pointed towards the TLC documentary made on Gerald, and it's not like I deliberately lied about it, it's just I didn't watch it because I didn't view it as an extremely reliable source. But it also contradicts with another report I used in the video, the NIST report. The NIST report says that there were no basements in the neighborhood itself, and Dr. Fawn also says that in the interview. As I was taught in schools for research papers, because these docs are by all means an informal research essay, there's a hierarchy of what sources to trust over others. I also remember browsing over the Storms Talker article on Gerald mentioning the shelter and I tried to look further into it to see if I could find any pictures or something of the shelter and could find absolutely nothing. After getting the gazillionth comment about it, I decided to figure out if any of my sources mentioned it and I was going through the sources I used or mentioned at the end and it was in one. But not as a whole article or paragraph or anything. It was in the NWS report with 99 pages, in the appendix, in a CDC report, and the issue of whether or not there was a basement in the entirety of the neighborhood wasn't addressed in the main report. For something so important, it should have been mentioned in recent reports of Gerald by the NWS or whatnot, but no, it hasn't. This is on me for not reading the whole appendix, but... It's stuffed all the way in the appendix with no mention in the main paper, which leads me to the lovely conclusion of this rambling of me. There was likely a tornado shelter in the neighborhood, but at the same time, the only true source that reports on the shelter is the CDC report, and I did not see it mentioned anywhere else in the sources I used, which leaves me kind of skeptical. But I also know I'm an idiot, so I'll be the Bart in this sort of scenario and just say up front there was a shelter in the neighborhood. This small yet big mistake is the only one that I cannot say was a video ruiner, due to how the sources I used contradicted each other. That's such a small part in a video that I began working on in March. But to end this on a high note, due to how much this video laid the foundation for what I do now, the Gerald Tornado video deserves such a high spot in my personal ranking. The video on Hurricane Sandy was the one I was the most hyped to work on. Any and all videos on Sandy that were out there seemingly forgot the meteorological aspects of it and also said Irene did nothing, so oops. I wanted to create a video that gave a general synoptic overview on what happened with Sandy and then some. That I accomplished. The research process, however, was rushed to hell and back. I skimmed through articles and had to rely on double checking during editing to make sure it was right. The video on Sandy was rushed. I started proper work on it a week before it was supposed to go up besides the interview with Ginger Z. However, thanks to Devin and my many proofreaders, this ended up not being as big of an issue as it could have been. Still really reckless on my end. The video itself is likely my best work. Writing was phenomenal, the editing was great, the interview with Ginger Z was great. Although some segments stayed for a bit too long, but I couldn't get around it because everything that Ginger Z said in that video was important. The dedication to my grandfather was extremely well received and apparently made everyone cry except for me for some reason, but probably because I watched it so many times over before uploading it. It fulfilled all of the hype that I had for it, and then some, with many people saying this or the December 10th video is their favorite work that I've made. But I still have issues with it. For one, I did a stupid and said November instead of October at one part, which 
was the only mistake I made during the video itself. But at the same time, I feel like the Sandy video's research process, which really only I care about, wasn't as fun as it could have been if I tried. That and the subject matter is still a really big story, but I really like doing smaller stuff that is kind of obscure, but also kind of big for where it occurred. Which means my favorite work is the one that I made that nobody cares about! Out of all of the storms that I have covered that needed a dedicated documentary on it, Alberto 1994 was that storm. One might not think that a high end tropical storm deserves a deep look, but I think I proved otherwise. A storm that I was told about in the 8th grade stuck with me ever since I was told about it. The interview with my 8th grade social studies teacher was short and far from the most important interview I've done on this channel, but it was extremely well done and deserved to be in the video. Researching it was hell though, but at the same time extremely satisfying. There were barely any sources I could find on Alberto 94, but the ones I found ended up being really good sources and some of the most thought-provoking pieces on a storm that I've looked into. Researching older and more obscure storms does that to people. I really loved researching this, and in fact, I had to hold myself back from going really in-depth with what I wanted to cover, especially the NWS report of the handling of the event, which most of that had to be cut from the final product. The video itself was beautiful as well, with the exception of my mic giving up for one part and one weird transition choice I made. Otherwise, especially for my first Tropical Cyclone video, it was fantastic. Everything from the description of the flooding to the synoptic overview, even with the limited resources, was just... Uh, it was so good. There were also no errors in this video, so that's good. I guess I have a real personal attachment to this video, and despite it bombing hard on the algorithm, it's still the one that I think that I come back to the most. And for that reason, it's my personal favorite that I've made. That said then, this was a long look back, and I'll definitely have to look at altering this for next year, but it's been a fun ride. Schedule is listed on my Twitter, but as we have my credits, or lack thereof really, I wanted to give a thanks to the people who have been supporting this channel ever since I started doing weather documentaries. Those people being Thomas, Kay, Devin, Coda, Alice, among so many more. I cannot thank you all enough for dealing with me and my random nonsense. Specifically to Rishi and Alice for being my proofreaders. My videos would be so much worse if they didn't suffer through reading through these scripts before I record. Special thanks to Celtic White, who has been my channel artist since last year. This channel would not be the same without me being a marketable plushie. Special thanks to those that who have agreed to interviews, which helped make a stronger product in the end, and everyone else for supporting what I do. Special thanks to those subscribed to the channel Patreon, those being A. Scooper, Maxwell Looney, and Montpellier at the Ophis Army tier, and Basilius of Stupidonia, J. Cario, King Shisha, Neon Binary Origin, and Worm Off the String at the Off Mini tier. If you want to have access to full uncut interviews and my scripts, alongside other things in the future, consider subscribing to the Patreon or the YouTube membership thing when I finish that. Alright, I'm done here, so hope you all have a great new year. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Let's make 2023 an even bigger year for the channel and weather documentaries than this year. Thank you all so much for the support, and I'll see you all soon.